Hey, we're Matt and Shelby Heisler, just your average married couple traveling the world. We love coming on here and sharing our adventures with you. Last week, we were in Scotland exploring the beautiful and historic coastline. As well as the gorgeous landscape of St. Andrews. This week, we're traveling just a bit south to... We're in Scotland! In Edinburgh. Edinburgh! Yes, we're in Edinburgh, Scotland's capital. And we're here during the world's largest theatre festival. We'll take you to St. Giles Cathedral just weeks before the Queen's memorial service was performed here. And you'll get to see Carol fulfill her dream of being a falconer. We'll check out some of the locations that inspired J.K. Rowling to write the Harry Potter books and show you why Edinburgh quickly became one of our favorite cities we visited. We still have so much more in store for you guys, so make sure you're subscribed and check back every Friday for a new video. We are now in Edinburgh. My mom is about to uh, hang out with a bunch of falcons and hold them, which has been a lifelong dream of hers that I've just heard in the last like couple days. Yet again, we have our person here to help us take our bags. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Can you do the falconry dance for me, Mama? I'm, I'm hopeful that they can see. Have you been working out your arm yeah, so that you can hold it? We're sorry, we're a little short on Falcon Street, but we have arranged for a crow to be. Um, <laughs> oh, please, I want my money back. No bueno. <laughs> Where are we going, Mama? Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> we're going to Dean Village by the Water of Leith. Leith. It's crossing. It's a historic village in Scotland. Dean Village is one of the oldest working villages on the outskirts of Edinburgh, depicted on many maps dating back to the mid 1500s. Next, we made a stop at St. Giles Cathedral. This Gothic-style church dates back almost 900 years to when it was founded in 1124 by King David I. It served as John Knox's parish church during the Reformation, and would also hold the memorial service for Queen Elizabeth just a few weeks after we visited. at the Fringe. Turns out he came a long way from San Diego just to perform at the Fringe. The Edinburgh Fringe is the world's largest arts festival occurring every August. It's been happening for 75 years now. Shelley even found a show that fit her interests. I don't know. So we're in Edinburgh right now at the Fringe. We heard about this basically through our friend Joey and this is like so Joey's scene this is hilarious like just street performers and so thanks for the recommendation my dad is an architect and really loves uh, getting to see all kinds of architecture around the world so we have to check out the Scottish Parliament building Mom is very excited. She's going to see her falcons. That one was unavisual. Look at the uh, way that she walks here versus the way she walks in the downtown. I am so tired. Yeah. On the exhausted. drive over here, I just slept in the front I was with our driver. Also. Oh, Mom 
Oh, it's so funny. This is the best. She's so cute. Just got, gotta get to the falcons. Really funny. Those oh, things are big. Cool. Damn. On a scale of one to fun, how excited are you, Mom? 100. That's not on the scale. Mom found this falconry experience at Dalhousie Castle, Scotland's oldest inhabited castle. Birds of prey are just so cool looking. The yeah. one just turned his head like completely around. Yeah. I wish I could do that. I wish I was an eagle. <laughs> then I'd get the respect I deserve. Mm. I mean, you'd also be chained up to one of these. That's fences. true. That wouldn't be too good. But people would look at me in, in awe. <laughs> oh, honey, we already do. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Nobody respects me. Shelby is explaining to me that there's it's a bird over there. It's only funny if you can see it. That did not skip leg day. <laughs> it looks like a mutant or something. Whereas these guys, these guys are skipping leg day left oh. and right. <laughs> that's some kind of, that's like a mythical creature from some C.S. Lewis book if I've ever seen one. The moral of the story is don't skip leg day. Because Give I us a wave, mama. <laughs> Shelby just admitted something that's a big deal. She just lost her uber virginity. She's never been on an uber before. Yeah. What a way to do it. Listening to some Lionel Richie. In, uh, Going to a castle, yeah. driving to a castle. That pretty, was pretty cool. cool. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. She was so excited that she got to handle an owl and a hawk. I mean, just look at how happy she is. funny bone on my back. On your back? No, I don't know. How does that... that I was trying to say my tailbone, but I said my funny bone instead. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have been busy bees this morning, and uh, I haven't gotten to run in probably two or three weeks. And today feels like the perfect day. And uh, what are you gonna do? Um, maybe I'll walk. A little hot girl walk. Why is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> Why? It's so weird. I don't know. Self-confidence. All right. Well, let me change really quick. So this is our first full day in Edinburgh. We got into the place that we're staying last night. Decently priced accommodations, right? Yeah. For, uh, for what it is. Super clean. Well, especially right now, we're here in August during this huge theater festival called The Fringe. And when I was booking it, I didn't realize we were going to be here during that. So it's really hard to find accommodations. We're staying in a place from Booking.com called Salisbury Court Accommodations. We were lucky to find this place. Technically, it's a student housing for university students. So it's kind of like dorm room style, which was is kind of fun. It's like taking us back to our college days. And, and it feels like a, uh, a dorm experience because uh, this morning at around four, the mm -hmm. uh, fire alarm went off in mm -hmm. classic uh, college fashion. Someone had been either cooking or smoking in their room, <laughs> literally love, next to us. Love the college experience. Um, and so me back. It was just hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it was like a little startling, obviously, well, but yeah, we sound asleep. It was pretty funny because it just like reminded us of the college days when like someone would burn popcorn or something, and yes. uh, it took us back to those. Uh, well, even times. one lady that was out there was like, "I just got to sleep an hour ago," and we're like, "It's 4 a.m." <laughs> you can laugh about it or cry about it, but it's more interesting to laugh about it so that's what we did i won't be laughing if it happens again though, like no times. i'll probably see if we can get a discount or something <laughs> ready for my run and i think i'm gonna scope out arthur's seat because mm -hmm. we're gonna go on a hike there 
on Friday. But don't get bored of it. Like, I still want to go I'm going to get super hiking. bored of it, and then I'm not going to want to do it with you. And Friday. then you're going to have to do it alone. Shelby is currently looking for a restaurant to eat at before we go to the military tattoo, which I'm not really sure what that is, but it should be know cool. know more about it than what you're saying. That's true. I just want to add some suspense, you know? <laughs> These halls really remind me of one of our college dorms at Iowa. Many a good time was had in Sigma and Blackstone. Blackstone. We're going to see the military tattoo, which is like a music concert thing no, up at the castle. It's like a, it's a bunch of like military groups from different countries, like showing off for their country and coming together and doing, I guess, like a performance. Either way, it sounds really cool. Yeah, so. so we just finished our dinner and uh, there wasn't much conversation to be had because Shelby was just singing along hey. to our entire playlist of One tiny. Direction and Hannah Montana. Whoever was making the playlist for that <clears throat> restaurant, they knew what was going on. They knew what was going on. <laughs> which was to annoy me. <laughs> I forget that Shelby like is such an avid fan of these old bands from forever ago. I mean what? Like don't make it seem like I'm You're like, not just alone. Like Hannah Montana fan right now. No, it's everybody like else is too. It. Yeah. So it's just funny. The city is alive and bustling, just the way Andrew likes it. So many people everywhere. <laughs> so many people. The Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo first began in 1950. Thank you. Thank you. 2020 would have been its 70th anniversary, but since the pandemic led to its cancellations the last two years, this was technically its 70th show. It takes place every August in the Edinburgh Castle Esplanade, and it runs almost all month long. This year, it featured more than 900 performers from countries such as the US, Mexico, Switzerland, Germany, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and of course, the UK. We're gonna go find our seats. It actually looks a lot bigger in the pictures. It's a little bit smaller than I thought it was, but still super impressive. It's gonna be really cool. I'm excited. Well, if anything, it's cool that it's kind of more exclusive here since it's smaller. Yeah. It's not, because it runs all month long, but I like to no. think so. <laughs> and it's busy all month long. It's crazy. One of the traditions of the tattoo is having a guest of honor at every show. Taking the salute tonight will be Captain Dimitro Donskoy of the Ukrainian Navy, Defense Attaché at the Ukrainian Embassy to the United Kingdom, accompanied by Major General Alistair Bruce, Governor of Edinburgh Castle. Scotland opened the show with a warm welcome. Next up was the U.S. Army Field Band. I still don't know which country this was, but they sure did have a memorable performance. But 
that the crowd especially loved the U.S. Air Force Honor Guard. <laughs> We saw some Scottish Highland dancing. And this amazing performance from Mexico. Matt was especially fond of this performance by his Swiss countrymen. Incredible. What did you think? I thought it was pretty stinking cool. On the way back from the tattoo. Wow, what a cool experience. If you uh, ever get to be in Edinburgh the time that we're in, in it. In August. Yeah. Make some time for this because it's it's really cool. It's super epic. And you just feel like a a part of something bigger. I don't know. Yeah, it like brings the whole world together in a way. It's like a cultural celebration. Yeah, really and you cool. feel some pride for the U.S. of A. Yeah, they crushed it. Our boys it. crushed it. Not really the like marching band, but the... The marching band was awesome. What are you talking about? They were fine. Oh my gosh. But the, the air No, they were really incredible. Really Headed back to our room to catch some winks. We're going to have a lot of late nights here. I'm excited. <laughs> it is day two of our five days in Edinburgh. Sorry for the sound. I'm sure it's terrible. Um, we're heading to some gardens. Nice thing about having a whole week here is that we don't feel like super rushed to do everything. Also, it's I feel like... kind of like, what are we doing today? Like, yeah. I don't know. Let's see what sounds good. There is a lot to do, obviously. There's a lot to do. Especially with like the fringe <laughs> happening right now. There's so many different shows. It's almost like sensory overload where you're just like well what should we do oh well there's a million things to do so uh let's not do anything <laughs> just getting out and exploring a bit uh, we're gonna do like this harry potter walk thing tomorrow it's just nice to walk around and explore someplace new it's such a like charming and kind of gothic looking city i don't know if charming and gothic are two words that go together i don't know i feel like here they do okay I, this is the only place I can think of that is like that, but... You heard it here, folks. Charming and Gothic. We're now on a walkway that was too sketchy to pass through last night. Well, or so we thought. when it was dark, but... Dark and... Nice. Foreboding. But seems now to be just fine. We made it to our oh, garden. And the cool, creepy oh, building. Tell us a fact about the castle. I don't know any facts about the castle. Well, that seems like a fact, fact to me. Is that we you don't know last anything. Night for the... oh, right so Shelby's been holding out on all of us and actually does know a yep. fun fact. Do you have a fun fact about the uh, the castle that's right over there? I forgot that I do know that the castle is built on a dormant volcano. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Right? We were just talking about how you like see the difference in types of castles that are here. You just would never want to like attack this castle. It just looks so yeah. challenging and foreboding. But the other castles, like the Disney castle that we went to, 
by Schweinstein. Like, yeah, you wouldn't want to, I guess. It takes a long time to get up there. Yeah. But it doesn't look as, like, defensible and fortified. So I think I'd probably go with the Edinburgh Castle if I had to choose a castle to, <laughs> to, protect, to protect myself in if I was a king. We wandered around and stumbled upon this old bookstore that I read about online, so we had to check it out. This bookshop had some crazy old editions of classic books, plus a lot from J.R.R. Tolkien. We decided we'll have to come back someday and bring an extra suitcase just to pack it up with these books. We were thirsty, so we made a pit stop at this cute little boba shop. We're about to attempt what we call the Trisha. I'm not good at this though. But you have to do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> no, I can't even do it with my eyes open. Uh, oh my gosh, that was so hard. Nobody. Good evening. Done with work for the day and heading to get some much needed dinner. <laughs> yeah, you <sighs> can even have lunch. Yeah, Just I'm excited to through. put some food in my belly. <laughs> One of the challenges of this lifestyle, and this is not me complaining, this lifestyle is insanely incredible is that there's not a lot of rhythm. It's a lot of like back and forth in new places and which is amazing. And I, I think my personality like really thrives off of that. But it is tiring sometimes to be working all day and then like, oh, now we have to do like a bunch of stuff in this new place. <laughs> Otherwise, feel it doesn't feel like, like we're making the most of yeah. it. It's those nights that get you sometimes that are just super tiring but well, and I think that's totally where it's worth so it. important to plan a time this could go even just for being at home even if you're not traveling but to like make time for restful things and yeah just unplanned time like plan unplanned time basically where like this morning we didn't have an agenda we just knew we wanted to go out in the city and like walk a bunch and that felt restful to me totally um, and we know tomorrow we're gonna explore a lot of the city so we don't feel like we need to be doing that tonight yeah so we have this time to just kind of wander and do whatever feels good in the moment you don't have to have it all planned you can already tell that shelby likes this place are you uh, struggling with what to get Joe? my brain knows what i should get and my heart doesn't agree with it <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, Shelby, how excited are you? I'm not like that crazy excited about this. Why don't you tell oh, the well, good people of YouTube said. what we're up to? <laughs> <laughs> the 10 second version. Edinburgh is known for its <laughs> Harry Potter sites because J.K. Rowling spent time here when she was thinking about Harry Potter in the first place. And so there's some cool sites. There's there you go, you have it. <laughs> there's cool, some cool sites. There's some cool sites around Edinburgh that um, you can either do your own little like walking tour and find them, which I was planning on doing. But then when I was on maps, I noticed a little icon that said that there's a free um, like walking tour that these people do. Uh, <laughs> The Potter Trail walking tour took us places like George Harriet's school, where students have been sorted into four houses for centuries. We also saw Victoria Street, the inspiration for Diagon Alley, as well as Elephant House Cafe, where JK first wrote Harry Potter. We finished the tour seeing gravestones with names like William McGonagall and Thomas Riddle. We're going back to Tom Riddle's grave because Shelby needs to lay some flowers to... down. <laughs> I still think that we discovered 
another inspiration in this graveyard that they didn't know about. Which is? When we were at the very beginning of the tour, remember there was like a stone that said like Lillian or Lil mm, right? It was yeah. Lillian or was it like Liliana so. or something? Lillian and, and James. And James. And I'm like, okay, like on the same tombstone, like it was a family. I think it was a mother and father. Highly suspect details, if you ask me. Details. I'm sure. I mean, that, otherwise that's a way too much of a point. I will say I, like I knew most of the things that we were going to see on the tour because it was most of the stuff that I already wanted to see, like all put together. But it was interesting to hear about J.K. Rowling's life and like totally. history because I just haven't spent that much time like researching or reading about her like her past. Yeah. So that was that was neat. Like I wouldn't I, have known that I had if we didn't do that. our tour. With I think I heard Ryan. it once, but I had forgotten that she like was divorced and had a baby. Yeah. Um, In Portugal. And yeah, I didn't know how much traveling she did before this. I didn't know she still lives here in Edinburgh. Yeah, and neither That's did I. Super cool. Now you just learned all those facts and you didn't have to now pay you don't 20 pounds. The, the free tour. <laughs> Not a free tour. Lesson. There is nothing that's free in this life. <laughs> this is a cool graveyard though. Kinda this would definitely this is definitely a must if you're in Edinburgh. This is really cool. Agreed, it is cool. The graveyard is also famous for Greyfriars Bobby. This dog supposedly spent 14 years guarding his late owner's grave. Bobby became so beloved that they buried him in this graveyard too. We passed through the iconic Advocate's Close. This eerie alleyway looks straight out of Gotham City. We had to continue our Potter-themed day with a visit to McGonagall's Gin and Whiskey Emporium. Okay, hold it up to your head so we get perspective. There we go. It's bigger than his head. He's got a big head, so... We had some time to kill before our friend show that night, so we checked out one of Edinburgh's nicest hotels, the Balmoral. That night we were seeing a friend show at the jazz bar featuring a jazzy take on classic John Williams scores. <laughs> We just got done <laughs> with our time at the uh, jazz bar. So cool. Such a cool experience getting to hear like John Williams, like more jazzy, but John Williams is already jazzy. So it's like, I mean, he like was a jazz pianist and that's how he got started. Mm -hmm. And then to see this like jazzed even more, so cool. They so, are all so talented. Too. So, like, so talented. Crazy. I don't even know their band name. We'll link it in the description. And like the jazz bar was so cool too. Even if you're in Edinburgh and it's not the fringe time, like go to the jazz, is it the jazz bar? Or the jazz yep. club? The jazz bar. So cool. Like they, I think they it's have jazz the every night or at least most nights. Yeah, I'm sure they do. It's such a cool atmosphere. Such a cool time. What are we off to, Shelby? Arthur's Seat. Today we're gonna hike up to Arthur's Seat, which is kind of the popular hill to hike up to in the town, and it supposedly like looks over the city. You went up there a few days ago on there on your run, right? You should be the one talking about it, not me. I was hoping you'd say something funnier about Arthur's Seat. You're the funny one here. So the reason that Arthur's Seat is called Arthur's Seat and is so significant is because Arthur used to sit on this hill. Oh! Which, and uh, Arthur? King Arthur. Okay. Of the Knights of the Round Table, oh, you know? Oh, okay. What would he do? He'd just sit there? They sit there and ponder why his knights didn't treat him with respect. Okay. That was really what it was all about. He just wanted a little bit of respect, just like Aretha Franklin. Yeah. And so... Oh, are, was he like a giant? Is that why his seat is exactly. so Exactly. Yep. Okay. And so he's just 
a very large man had a very large bottom. Well, you would need one to sit on yeah. the chair. There you have it. Now you've learned a little bit about uh, our We gotta get up there. What is that? Alcatraz. That is a tiring hill. Okay, just turn your back to me. Made it back down from our hike. Short, steep, and exhausted. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like difficult. Like it's not like treacherous, but it's just a lot of, it's basically just going up a ton of stone steps. It's like doing 20 flights of stairs or something. Yeah, it's know. good. But it's yeah, good workout. If you ever find yourself in London, I mean Edinburgh, <laughs> <laughs> check this place out because it's very, very tasty. Tune in next week when we'll be visiting the Faroe Islands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the Watch as I surprise Matt with a birthday trip to one of the most epic places in the world. We'll take you through the world's only underwater roundabout. Get up close to lots of wildlife. showcase some of the most magnificent sights we've ever seen. What can I say? We really fell for these islands. Pick up again, but right now... Whew. This is one you won't want to miss. So make sure you're subscribed and following along every Friday for new adventures. We'll see you in the Pharaohs.